All right, so in this next video, we're talking about uh, inverse functions, and we're going to look at the graphs of inverse functions. There are some very interesting features uh, that occur and relationships between the graphs. And so to start out, what I want to do is uh, look at the example we just saw. f of x was 2x minus 5, and when we found its inverse, it was 1 half x plus 5 halves. Now, what I'm going to do is plot the graph of these two functions on the same set of axes so that you can see the relationship between them. In order to plot those graphs, I'm going to first find the x and y intercepts of each uh, line and then plot the line through them. So in this first one, the, uh, the y-intercept is fairly simple to find, of course, you plug a 0 in for x, and, well, this is slope-intercept form, so, oops, that should be a minus right there, sorry. Um, the 2 times 0 drops out, and you just get a negative 5. Okay, so the y-intercept in this case would be, um, what, 0 comma negative 5. The x-intercept little bit harder to find. You put a zero in for the y and solve for x. So we add the five to both sides, divide both sides by two, and so x is going to equal five halves. And five halves you you know is uh, 2.5. So our x-intercept here is 2.5 comma 0. All right. Let's do the same thing with the inverse function. First I'll find the y-intercept. That one again should not be too hard to find. It's f inverse of 0. 1 half times 0 plus 5 halves. Of course the 0 term drops out. You're left with 5 halves, which we know is 2.5. So the y-intercept is 0, 2, that's comma, 2.5. Okay. And the x-intercept, again, a bit harder to find, but not too bad. You plug the 0 in for the y-value. You have 1 half x plus uh, 5 halves. If I subtract the 5 halves from both sides, minus 5 halves equals 1 half x. And then to get rid of the 2, I can multiply both sides by 2. Uh, the 2's will cancel here. The 2's will cancel here. And I'm going to be left with a negative 5. So my x-intercept is negative 5 comma 0. Now, if you look at these x and y-intercepts, notice that the y-intercept on the first function is the x-intercept on the second, and the y-intercept on the second is the x-intercept on the first, just with the ordered pair switched around, right? The 2.5 is there, the 2.5, the negative 5, and the negative 5, um, which makes sense because we, we defined inverse functions as two functions where the inputs and outputs switch, right? You get your x and your y and they switch places. Um, and so it kind of makes sense that the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts would also switch places um, for inverse functions. So now let's take a look at the actual graph of these two lines. Um, draw my axes in in black and then I'm going to try to color coordinate the red and the green okay so the green function here is f of x it has a y-intercept at negative 5. I'm going to assume the scale here. Oops, let's move this up so you can see all of it. I'm going to assume the scale to be 1. So every grid line here is 1, okay, rather than writing it all in. So 0, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to put a point down there. 
x-intercept is at 2.5, so 1, 2 and a half. And we know the slope is 2, so I can get a pretty decent graph by just going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, all the way up through this graph. And down to back one, do that once. All right, so there's my green graph. That one is the f of x. Um, again, maybe I'll write the couple ordered pairs in here. So this is 0 comma negative 5. And this point here <coughs> is at uh, 2.5 comma 0. Those are our two intercepts. Now let's reverse this. Let's go with the red graph. Uh, the y-intercept in this case is 2.5. And the x-intercept is at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the slope is positive 1 half. You can't see that there. Slope is positive 1 half. And so we're going to go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and so forth. Time. There we go. And down one back to. All right. All right. That's not too bad. Pretty decent looking graph. And again, put my ordered pairs in here. This is negative five comma zero. And this point is 0, 2.5. Alright. So that's pretty good. That gives me two good graphs. Uh, but there's some interesting symmetry that I really like about these two graphs. And you can almost see it when you compare them with the x and y axes. Look at this, um, this triangle right here and this triangle are similar basically the same thing, right? Just rotated. This is a kite shape um, where all of the sides, uh, the adjacent sides here are equal and these two sides end up being equal. Um, some interesting symmetry takes place. And in fact, if I were to draw a line from the origin to the intersection point, you would find that there will be exact symmetry between these two graphs along that line. Okay, That line that goes up through the intersection point there is an interesting line. It is the line y equals x. One thing I forgot to do is label my inverse function over here in red. Okay, now this inverse function, uh, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the line y equals x runs midway between the other two functions. It is, in fact, a line of reflection between the two. What's interesting is that the intersection point here happens to be a point in which the x and y axis, or I'm sorry, the x and y coordinates are the same. And so in this case, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma, 5. And that's an interesting point because if I plug a 5 in to the original function, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 5 is 5. And here, if I put a 5 in, I get 5 halves plus 5 halves which is 10 halves, or also 5, when you reduce it. So 5 comma 5 is uh, a point on both lines. Um, that will always happen. So inverse functions, as a general rule, uh, the graphs, I'll say the graphs, 
of inverse functions graphs of inverse functions um, are a reflection across the line y equals x. Okay, And so that will always be the case. Now that makes for plotting graphs of inverses nice. And in the next video, I'll show a couple examples of that.